Imagine this, you're a college student who has three articles to read for your social psychology class, two podcasts to listen to for your history class, four PDFs to annotate for behavioral neuroscience, a couple of videos to watch for your creative writing class, and a book to read for your writing seminar. Now for the million dollar question, where the heck do you put it all? Should you take notes in Google Drive, Apple Notes, Notion? How are you gonna get the highlights into your app? If not, where will you be able to find the information again? I had these same problems as a student until I came across an app that changed my life. Reader. Why haven't you heard of this magical app yet? Because for the past year, it's been in early access, being tested by me and a bunch of other beta testers. You could say it's been my secret weapon at school. But a couple of weeks ago, I was told I could finally start speaking about it by the Reader team. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I use Reader as a student to help me consume information for my classes and creative pursuits. Feel free to skip to any part of the video which resonates with you most. What is Reader. I recommend watching Nicole Vanderhoven's video, which is uh, another PKMer in the community. If you want a more broad outlook on what Reader is and how to use it, this video is more niche to students, but broadly, Reader is the Read It Later app. You can save articles, books, videos, PDFs, tweets, and more. Anyone who's used Read It Later apps before will know the pain of combining things like Instapaper and Pocket and and web clippers all across different apps just to be able to do your reading. This solves that issue. Plus, if you combine it with Readwise, another app developed by the makers of Reader, it allows you to automatically send highlights you take in Reader to your note-taking app of choice, which I show how to do later in the video. How I use Reader for articles. So let's go to the internet and see how I would save an article into the Reader app. So let's type up a typical article that, you know, I would be very normal, normal for me to read. So maybe the, the history of peanut butter. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, this is a fantastic article right here. I have a problem. So there are a very easy way that you can get articles in, and that is with the Readwise Web Clipper up here. So you can just simply install it for Chrome. There are ways you can use it outside of Chrome, which I do not know, but all you have to do is click it, and it is saved into Reader. You can click Undo if you didn't mean to do that. There's also a shortcut you can do, which is Control R, and it does the same thing. You can also add tags here and also choose whether to move it to your inbox later or archive right from here instead. Now, you could read this in Reader or you could literally do the highlighting on the article itself by just simply doing some highlighting right here, boom. And then you can do any annotations you want. Peanut butter is the, the best food ever made in the world, exclamation mark, boom. And then you can also add tags if you want. Maybe I could do a peanut butter tag. I'm not gonna do that because I don't want a peanut butter tag, but you could add tags if you wanted. Do some more highlighting, boom, boom, so much peanut goodness. Then that is the first way that you could do all of the highlighting. You can also go into the Reader app and as you can see, it's popped up in my library. The library is where all the articles that you save are going to go to, as well as PDFs and other things. And there are three tabs in here, inbox, later, and archive. Automatically things will pop up in the inbox when you first send them and you have the option of sending them either to the depths of the archive if you don't want to see them anymore by shortcut is E. I'm going to undo that or you could press L on your keyboard and it goes to the later view. Now we see that it pops up in the later view and it's ready to be read by me. Now, if you wanna see a whole guide for shortcuts, you can just click help down here and view keyboard shortcuts. And you can see all the shortcuts in here. So I recommend definitely learning those because they're very helpful. You also have the option of saving by URL down here instead like this, boom. So that is another way that you can save if you don't want to do the other ways that I've talked about. Now, another thing that I use Reader for is for saving RSS feeds, which is for email newsletters and videos. 
This is awesome because what it allows you to do is subscribe to a email newsletter with your reader email address and it will automatically, anytime that email newsletter posts, send it to a reader. Same thing with videos. Anytime that someone you subscribe to his YouTube channel posts a video, it gets shows up in reader. So let's explain how to do that. You're gonna go over to this email tab right here and your reader readwise email is right here. So you're gonna copy that. And now what you can do is anytime you're in your email, I'm not gonna go to there because there's personal information, but you can forward an email to that reader email address and it will pop up in your reader browser. You can also subscribe to a newsletter. Yeah, that's right. Greatest newsletter out there. Ah, there it is, join our mailing list. So once you're down here and you found the mailing list, you just put in your reader email, let's subscribe. <laughs> We're subscribed, we'll send news to your inbox. <laughs> But once you subscribe to that uh, newsletter, the welcome email will pop up here. You just accept it, and then you will have every email forwarded to you. Same thing with a YouTube channel. Peanut butter YouTube. Say that I really liked this Discover YouTube channel. I would go over here to their homepage, go into the RSS feed, manage feeds, and then I would click add feed right here and I would put in the URL of the YouTube channel. Once I've added that, it will automatically add the five newest item. There it is. It will automatically add the five newest items that are published by that channel and you have the option to add those to Reader if you'd like to. Now, one reason I think this is so useful as students is if you're a student that needs to get updated on news for something, maybe like business news, like the stock market if you're in business, or an academic journal if you're in academia, then you can subscribe with this newsletter and get those really easily. Another reason I like it so much is because it allows me to batch process all of the things that I save at once in one view. So usually at nighttime, I will go into the my library, into the inbox feed, and I will go through a whole bunch of articles. There's no articles in there right now because it's the morning, but I will ask myself, does this still resonate with me after I saved it, probably earlier in the day, earlier in the week? And if it doesn't, I will put it to the archive. If it does, I'll put it to later for reading. And I might also add in some tags during that time as well, batch processing. And then I'll go to my feed and I'll do the exact same thing. I'll say, oh, I'd really like to leave that. Heck yes. Obsidian for non-coders, no plugins. Heck yeah, I'd like to see that. I uh, don't wanna see that, don't wanna see that, and don't wanna see that. And then I'm good, batch processing. Reader has a feature that allows you to listen to articles instead of just reading them with its automated transcription feature. So you could do that while walking to class if you wanted to. And another thing that I really like to use the YouTube videos and the podcast or the transcription audio feature for is immersing myself in the classes that I'm taking. I like to watch videos, podcasts, and read fun articles about the material that I'm taking in class, which are usually a lot more dry and they make you read textbooks and stuff. And that lets me get a lot more excited for it, a lot more like amped up, like, yeah, I wanna learn this. Plus, Reader's gonna have video and podcast transcription soon, which is even cooler. Now, how do you use Reader for PDFs? Well, if I'm being completely honest, I don't think Reader is the best app to use if you're really into academia. For that, I use Zotero, which is a much more comprehensive PDF reader. But if you're more of a laid back PDF reader, you're not really writing a ton of academic stuff, Reader is actually in my opinion, better than Zotero because it's so much simpler, so much easier to understand how to use. So the way that it works is very similar to articles. You just simply download a PDF, and then once you have it out, you can just go up here and save it just like this. Rot row. So this is actually a good time to discuss what to do if Readwise Reader doesn't 
manage to save something. Usually it works just fine, but right now it's not working. So you can actually add PDFs in a different way as well. You go over to the PDF view here, you click add documents, you can click upload file. And if I just put that document that I just put in, it's right here, application of peanut butter to improve the nutrition. So that's one other way to add PDFs. Finally, you can also use Reader for Twitter threads and individual tweets. Say that I see something that I'm like, whoa, I wanna save that so bad. You can literally just go to right here, the direct messages. Uh, you can also do it in public, but I don't need to see people to see that I am saving stuff with Readwise. You're gonna direct message to Readwise and your CAD comment is gonna be either save tweet or if it's a thread, save thread. It saves the thread right here in my tweet section and I have the option to either send it to inbox later or archive. Now we're gonna talk about filtered views, which I think is one of the most powerful parts of Reader. Filtered views allow you to filter all of the information you save into your Reader database using specific queries. Now there are some that are built into Readwise, which are the short list. All the information you save will automatically pop up here. So this is just like information you think is really important, but you can make your own filtered views. There's a whole link on how to do that that I have put in the description. There's an entire filtering guide that Reader has provided for us in Notion, which will let you create your own filters as well. Now, the ones that I use mainly, and the way I use it for classes, is for filtering articles that I specifically wanna read for a certain class or other pieces of information. So let's say, for example, I have a whole bunch of articles for my social psychology class, and I want them all to go to a specific place in Reader so that when on the day I have the readings for that class that I wanna do, I can just sit down, go to that filter view, boom, they're all there. Well, I have one for HD 2810 readings and the filter is tag HD 2810 and in inbox or in later. And all the readings that are tagged with that will pop up here. So say that I went into this article right here and I was like, my goodness, I want that in there very bad. Well, I could come into here, upload file, boom. Now it'll pop up right here. And because I added it in here, it's already been tagged with HG 2810, but you can see anything that's tagged with this will show up here. So that's really helpful for classes. Another thing I like to do is I have a filter for currently reading, which just shows me all the articles that I have started reading. I haven't finished them. You can see that the filter for that is right here. It's a pretty complicated one. Then I have one for short reads, which are our articles that are shorter than 10 minutes. So if I have very small amount of time, I can go in here and read that. Why is this really helpful for students? Well, a ton of students I know, if they have five minutes of time, just randomly in their day, they will 100% waste that. There's nothing that they can use it for, so might as well, might as well just go on TikTok and scroll through stuff. Well, Productive downtime is the idea of using your very small chunks of time productively. And one of the ways you can do that is by using the reader short view and read with the article with those five minutes that you have randomly in the day. And then finally, another tag that I use often is the PKM tag, which is where I just put a ton of articles related to PKM. It's very helpful for me researching into stuff for this channel. And this is another thing that you can use reader filter views for is saving articles all related to essay topic that you want to write or all related to a certain thing that you're interested in researching more in. There's a infinite possibilities with the filter view. So let's talk about Readwise. While you don't need both of them, Readwise is a subscription service that I have used for two years, much longer than Reader, and it essentially lets you save automatically your highlights from articles or pretty much anything, and it automatically shoots them over to your digital note-taking system of choice, which mine is Obsidian. I have a whole video explaining other intricacies of Readwise, but that is very much summed up. I have an affiliate link for it in the description where you can get some off, so be sure to use that if you do want to get it. <laughs> but 
thing that I love about Readwise is it allows you to export the highlights from Reader or from other things that you, information mediums like Kindle, in a specific format of your choice. So in Obsidian, this is my export. I have a whole bunch of specifics for how I want it to show up in my Obsidian. I'll put these in the description so you can save this if you want to use Obsidian as well and you want the same metadata. But as you can see, I have it pop up all of my highlights from Reader when they come to Obsidian, all the books will pop up in their folder, all the articles will pop up in their own folder, all tweets will pop up in their own folder, and all podcasts will pop up in their own folder. And then the way I have it aligned is it, it looks like this with the metadata. So that looks overwhelming, but let me just show you what it looks like in Obsidian. So in Obsidian, if I go over to my sources folder, which is where I host all of the sources that I have, then you can see I have my Readwise folder right here, and I have all of my saved information right here. You can see these are all podcasts. If I go over here, podcasts. This is a podcast with Andrew Huberman. This is a podcast with, uh, uh, here's Great Mental Models. Here's Jordan Peterson. And it does that for everything. I have highlights for my book. And then I also have highlights for articles and other things. The way you set that up with Obsidian is all you have to do is go to Community Plugins, search up Readwise Official, go to Options, and I already have it downloaded, so I don't have to download it again, but you're gonna download it here, and then you're gonna go to the Customize Formatting Options, click right here and it's gonna bring you to the same page that I was just on. Okay, so at this point, I'm hoping that you're pretty convinced of the power of Reader. So how do you actually get Reader? Well, all you have to do is go to your browser and type in this and that will bring you to the early access for it. And you can sign up for early access right here. All you have to do is enter your email and you can start to become the student you always wanted to be. Now keep in mind, it is an early access right now. You might experience some bugs and that is totally normal. I experience bugs all the time, but the reader team is amazing. They're so supportive. I'm sure that they will fix those bugs as time goes on. Be sure to check out my video on how I take book notes in Obsidian to see how I take these highlights from my books send them over to Obsidian with Readwise, and then summarize them in Obsidian. As always, have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye-bye.